These videos are offered on a pay-what-you-like basis. You can pay for the use of the videos by going to my website. There's a link to the website in the info box. Uh, here's the address of my website, uh, www.freelance-teacher.com slash videos.htm. That address is www.freelance-teacher.com slash videos.htm. Uh, or you can just use the link in the info box. Uh, I'll also mention that I offer tutoring uh, via Skype, um, and you can find more information about that Skype tutoring service also at this website. And again, there's a link to that site in the info box. Thank you. I have prepared some handouts that cover the material uh, that is uh, covered in this series of videos. And uh, in these videos, I'm going to be referring uh, repeatedly to the material in those handouts. So it will be much easier to follow along with the videos if you have the handouts printed out in front of you uh, while you're watching the videos. Uh, you can uh, access the printable handout documents at my website. And once again, this is the address of my website. And it would be easiest to get there by just, click, uh, by just clicking the link uh, in the info box. Okay. So to start with, let's say we have uh, block A. Up here. So here's block A, it has a massive M. Block A with a massive M. And it's on top of an incline with height H. Uh, and this is a frictionless incline. Um, so we'll, we'll do a bunch of parts here. But to start with, how would we figure out the speed at the bottom? So clearly this is going to slide from the top to the bottom. And then go shooting off. So how would we figure out how fast it would be going at the bottom of the incline? So let's give that a shot. Okay, good. It's always good to indicate the initial and the final points. So here's the initial point, and here's the final point. Good. Although, actually, I, I, uh, let's do this as a multi-step problem. So um, maybe instead of calling that, well, I guess we could call it initial and final, but maybe we could call this, uh, let's see, what would be some good uh, names of this? We can just call this point one and point two, because later on we'll have a point three. Good. So there's a normal force going perpendicular and the weight going down. Good. could solve it this way, but that actually would be time consuming and would be prone to mistakes. Now the question here was asking us for the speed at the bottom. That's the type of question that's best solved using conservation of energy, work in conservation of energy. Uh, I think we talked about this, I don't remember. Um, when is conservation of energy and work a good approach? Problems about distance and speed. Problems about distance and speed, work and energy are a good approach. Problems about acceleration and time, maybe Newton's second law would be the best approach. But the best approach for problems about work and energy is uh, distance. Yeah, work and energy is best for problems about distance and speed. Okay, so how would we uh, apply that here? that approach. Let me guide you through this a little bit. So what's our basic equation that relates work and energy? What's the basic equation that we have that relates work and energy? Um, is it the um, um, net uh, work of the non-conservative forces? Equals? Equals the um, change in potential um, kinetic energy 
That's the change in potential energy. Good. Or to start with, we could call that the change in mechanical energy. Okay, good. So our basic formula that relates work and energy, the net work by the non-conservative forces is the change in mechanical energy. Okay, net work. So this stands for non-conservative. All right, now um, let's think about which of these forces here would appear on this left-hand side. So for example, um, should we include any work that's done by the weight in this left-hand side? No. no, because... That's a conservative. Yeah, remember that the weight is the force of gravity. Well, we know that gravity is one of our conservative forces. Mm -hmm. So we only want the non-conservative forces here, so we won't include the work done by gravity. Mm -hmm. And how about the work done by the normal force? Will that appear over here? That's right, but, but why not? Um, I don't know. <laughs> so here's the, where we can use that other formula you were talking about. Mm -hmm. You were saying the work uh, is the component of the force that's parallel to the movement times the distance. Mm -hmm. But the normal force, so which way are we going to be moving here? We're going to be moving down the inclined plane, mm -hmm. but the normal force is perpendicular to the inclined plane. So F parallel for the normal force would be zero. The normal force doesn't have a component that's parallel to the movement. Um, so the normal force can't do any work in this case because it's perpendicular to the movement. So the normal force is a non-conservative force, but it's not doing any work. So that would also be zero. So we end up with this equation. The change in the energy is going to be zero. Okay. We don't include gravity over here because it's a conservative force, and we don't include the normal force because it's perpendicular to the movement, so it doesn't do any work. All right, and I, um, I think we, uh, actually I don't remember when we talked about what to do in this case. Now we have, this is a conservation of energy problem. Basically this is saying the energy isn't going to change. The change in energy is zero. So the best way to write this now is E initial equals E final. If there's no change in the energy, that means E initial equals E final. And now let's start plugging in in more and more detail. So what are the components of E initial? Well, you already mentioned that the mechanical energy is kinetic plus potential. OK, um, so we're going to have the kinetic energy initial plus the potential energy initial. And then we have the kinetic energy final plus the potential energy final. We should be a little more specific here. What type of kinetic energy do we have to take into account? Translational, rotational, or both? Um, translational. Because this is a block, we wouldn't expect it to rotate. This is not a wheel, so we wouldn't expect this to rotate. So I'll write TR, we only care about the translational kinetic energy. Only the translational kinetic energy matters on this problem, because the block wouldn't rotate. And how about potential energy? Um, do we care about the gravitational potential energy here, the spring potential energy, or both? Um, not the spring potential energy because there is no spring. Yeah, it's pretty clear there is no spring. When do you care about the gravitational potential energy? Well, anytime anything is changing its height, and this is definitely changing the height. So all we have to put in, so I'll put in a GR for gravitational potential energy. Because remember, at this point in the course, we've actually seen two different types of kinetic energy and two different types of potential. So you have to decide which parts are relevant for the problem that you're working on. Okay. All right, so now we can go through and try to calculate these. Now, in many problems, many of these would be zero. So can you see any terms that would be zero here? Um, the initial um, kinetic energy would be zero because it's starting at rest. Yeah, I didn't say that, but I guess it's kind of implied by the problem that we're starting at rest. Maybe I should have said that. But anyway, I was meaning to say that it starts at rest and then moves down. So this term would be zero. Anything else that would be zero? Um, the um, gravitational Because at the end, it's going to be on the ground. And on the ground, your energy is zero. So that makes this much simpler. Now there's only two terms. We've seen that a lot of the time. Um, I think we did a big problem last time where we had a whole bunch of energy terms, and a lot came out to be zero. OK, so that happens here too. So these are the only terms we have left. So now we actually have to plug in the formulas for those. Do you remember, what's the formula for gravitational potential energy? Um, MGH. Good. Now in this case, we have to see MGH initial. Or actually. I, I broke my own rule. I said I wanted to use one and two instead of initial and final. So I'll put in this should be one instead of initial. All right, because the height uh, at point one is different than later. 
All right, and so then what would be our formula for the translational kinetic energy at point two? Uh, one-half times mv2. Squared. Squared. Okay, good. Okay, so mgh sub one equals one-half mv sub two squared. Good. Uh, all right, now is there anything we can do right off the bat to simplify this equation? Yeah, we could divide both sides by the mass and cancel the mass terms. All right, and now what? Um, we're solving for uh, the velocity. So. Right. Um, Multiply both sides by 2 and then take the square root to get v2 by itself, and then 